So I want to talk about something that really irks me as an IDA developer and is definitely a big reason why I will tell people to stay away from the language. Um, <laughs> the syntax highlighting in editors for IDA is terrible. Now, Visual Studio Code is one of the interesting ones in that you has some uh, actually really good introspection for what the uh, what the underlying stuff is doing, what it's identified everything as. So you can actually determine why uh, it's so bad. But uh, there, there, there's basically only one IDA uh, grammar, they call it, for Visual Studio Code. And it was written by an Alessandro De Sol, who I assume has never worked with Ida in his life. And this is how I feel about the majority of them, because we... let's... There's a lot of stuff lacking here. There isn't really any errors, but there's a lot of stuff lacking here. Where's the really good one? By really good one. Yeah, here we go. But this is the same color as... Uh, what was this? Is this one I had open? Yeah. Yeah, so... Why is... Why are these the same color? Is it because they're being identified as the same thing? So, this this makes sense. This is correctly identified as a string, a quoted string, and more specifically, a double quoted string. That's fine. Nothing, nothing to say about that. So, yeah, this is just the first example, and that's already looking a heck of a lot like somebody who has never actually worked with the language. That seems like the kind of thing a C developer would think. But there's... Let, let, let's just start to look through this. You know, what's different about this? Oh, because it's... No attempt at marking that at all has happened. And that's just a keyword. That's it, Some more specific scope would be nice, but that's not a problem. What? What the fuck? Yeah, that's... Um, I mean, this part is right, but... That's not a function. That, that's a package. Should be using like meta dot namespace or something. I don't know, a module something. What? What the fuck? This should be entity dot name, but other dot attribute name is what you see for the attributes in HTML or XML. Uh, I could see actually reusing this for the attributes in Ida because they're basically the same thing. But the name of the package is definitely not this. And furthermore, if if this one is being labeled as this, why are why are these not? So I got that one right, but this is attribute name. Okay. And then something you may have noticed when you used to see me do the videos using Nano is that I would be able to correctly identify this, which doesn't even look like they've made an attempt at. Even if it were to just be hard coding those in directly instead of some kind of scope uh, to mark it in the correct location, you'd be able to do that. And then it would just, you know, also mark pure in some places where it's not actually an attribute. 
but that would mostly check out fine. No attempt at all. Now what, what's, what's this? What? What the fuck? We're not even past the seventh line yet, and this is just absurd. This is just absurd. I take it no attempt has been made at... Yeah... Yeah. Now... So that it got correct when most things would not. But... Yeah, and then you're... What happens if we... What? Oh boy. Kill so, yourself. Oh, uh, please, please, kill yourself. So then, if maybe you think GPS can do a better job, uh, sort of, sort of, you'll notice it, uh, does highlight the aspect there, but it doesn't highlight the aspect there. <laughs> this is a bit annoying. It does, on the other hand, though, do a considerably better job at identifying types, as you'll notice. And, like you would want, it doesn't uh, color that as a string, because even though it is, it's just sort of a special syntax. It's not really the same thing as a string literal like this would be. <coughs> but then here we have a bit of a representation of... Um, it's a little over-greedy when it marks the aspects. Instead of just marking size, like I would think, and then marking this as a um, a delimiter, and then this as a number, it goes, nope, whole thing's an aspect. And, like, okay, technically, yes, the whole thing is the aspect, but at least conceptually, with way everything else is, the identifier is the one that gets marked. You don't see with a type definition, the entire thing get marked one color, you just see the identifier get marked that color. So, yeah, a bit, uh, a bit weird. I don't, I don't like it. But it definitely does a better job, it's just not good. Now, GPS is obviously a commercial product. Well, sort of. They they have it uh, partially as a commercial product, partially available under the GPL license, unless you happen to get it through. Uh, that licensing is complicated. but um, So that's obviously declared a you know fully finished product. They have that syntax highlighter working the way they want it to. So maybe some minor improvements, but that's that's the way they want it to work. And many years, it has not changed. Well, I, sorry, it's changed a little bit. Uh, they added support for the aspects in there, but that was it. Uh, Alessandro de Sol actually used the syntax highlighter he wrote as an example for this book. So that's definitely an instance of him saying, hey, I have a finished product here. And that I got some things I'd like to say to that, but I'm 
I'll refrain from it from in this video. Now, Sync Fusion, they they have a bunch of free resources. It's not even just stuff specifically for their products. They have this whole collection of these books. Many of them are great. Many of them are definitely worth downloading the copies of. This one is pathetic, though. This one does not come close to the quality I would expect out of Sync Fusion. Um, well, out of out of the books that they've published, basically. Um, correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe Del Sol is a Microsoft employee. This is sort of the quality I expect out of Microsoft, but uh, at least in past years, re recent years, they've been a lot better. But, uh, yeah, not not happy about how crappy that is combined with this being presented as highly legitimate finished work. Now, if this, if this were something like I, I came across a blogger trying to, or a blog post about a, a guy trying to write these, write this and his experience with it and his current progress, then you know, it'd be a lot more lenient on it. That's, that's not somebody saying this is finished. That's somebody saying it's a work in progress and maybe I'd even be willing to help out on that but this is pathetic and there are of course other examples if you look at other editors but I've mostly got the point made they're all roughly along those qualities um, and even uh, the thing that drives me batty is even as primitive as GNU Nano is I was able to get better highlighting than basically anything else had to offer. So I've been dinking around with actually defining one of these for, I, I guess it's TextMate in general, but uh, Visual Studio Code uses the TextMate language grammars. Um, so I've been dinking around with this and I can show off, it's, it's nowhere near complete yet, but I can show off <clears throat> how it's doing a better job of scoping a lot of this stuff. So if we pull up something like this, and we want to look at the original line, you can see that for package, it correctly recognizes that this is the, <clears throat> you know, the meta of a package. And that actually will span down through the entire thing. It, it literally until it reaches the end. And uh, oh, it looks like it's a bit too greedy there. So I'll need to fix that. But you know, and then it can still recognize that this is a keyword. And this this concept of actually scoping it is useful uh, because then it allows us to do things like this where if we click into the aspect de uh, definition or the, the the aspect block i guess you could say you can see that it is recognizing that this is also a meta aspect and then we can you know just continuously drill down like that where i also need to make this be recognized as a keyword inside of an aspect uh block but then uh you know, you can just continuously build up like that, which is one reason why ultimately this will have a much better definition or much better um, result than I could ever get with Nano, but should also really uh, show how half-assed the Ida grammar uh, was that this all did. And... Again, they're basically all like that. I, I even the one from IdaCore you think would be excellent, especially since it's a whole IDE dedicated to Ida, and it it's sort of crap. It's sort of crap. But if we pull up uh, just to show, well, I guess I don't need to do it in this one. I can uh, stop debugging that. We pull up so you can see 
how other languages do it. Um, I'm not really sure which one of these is going to be a great example. So, okay, yeah, you can see it a bit here where it's the meta preprocessor include. And then this specific part is the uh, the include keyword. We go over here. It's the the actual quoted include part, but they're still part of the meta preprocessor include. Similarly, you can see a meta function, but then this is entity name function instead of the entity dot other dot attribute name that for some freaking reason uh, Del Sol wanted to use. And um, yeah, basically, basically they all wind up working like that. They all have a bit of that depth where it tries to group uh, in larger meta blocks, which is useful for other tools. But then uh, it, it just continuously drill down so that you can get the good uh, highlighting. Yeah, so I'm working on this uh, in addition to a, um, a color theme. The color theme is already published. It's sort of still an in-progress, like, beta thing, but it's sort of done. Uh, I'm just sort of tweaking little things and adding in things as I need them. But, um, yeah, the... We'll eventually get a good text mate grammar for Ida. There's definitely not one now. <laughs>